Guys, I want a 425 to 30K. Which one should I get? Get this one. It is a good camera. Yeah, don't get that one. That camera lags. Get this one. This is smoother and it has four years of software upgrades. Hey, bro. This phone has five years of software upgrades and it is compact as well. Forget all of those. Get this. It has six years of software updates. Do I really need a phone with five to six years of software updates? Well, smartphone companies like Apple, Google, OnePlus, they all promise bigger software updates. Like four years update, six year update, even seven to eight years of software update. But the real question that has to be asked is, can a seven year old phone with the latest software function smoothly? Moreover, do we really need longer software updates on a smartphone? Well, we'll answer all of that. Now, we gave a small glimpse of this in our shots recently and you guys not only completed the light target, but also wanted a long video on it. Well. You ask, we deliver. This video is an interesting one because we'll do something that we usually don't do in our other videos. I'm really excited, Pratik, TechWiser. Let's freaking go. Now, we have the legendary Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. It comes with a Full HD Plus curved AMOLED display. And obviously, Exynos 9810 processor, UFS 2.1 storage, and only 3500 mAh battery. Now it launched in 2018 with Android 8 and it got Android updates up until One UI 2.5 which was based on Android 10 that was back in 2020s. That was only two years of Android updates. Back at that time, other than Apple, no one was offering longer software updates to their phone. But are only iPhones capable of that? Will a seven-year-old Android phone handle the latest software update? Well, Shovik installed the latest One UI 7 on the Galaxy S9 Plus. Yes, and that's right. But how did we do it? Well, it was a bit difficult to install. And a disclaimer here, this process is risky. If you mess up anything in the installation, your phone is dead. So a developer ported this One UI 7 beta from S24+. Plus. So this is not a custom ROM, this is a port. Yes, custom ROMs are not official OS. Whereas this is official One UI, which is fooled into running on an older smartphone. More of like Gcam is fooled to run on non-pixel phones. Correct. Like that, yeah. Now for installing it, turn on the OEM unlocking and USB debugging in settings. It's very important by the way. For the next step, you need to have a laptop, download Odin and install TWRP via Odin. Once done, reboot to TWRP and go to wipe to format data and type yes. After that, flash the universal repartition files. Next, you need to flash the One UI 7 beta port. So tap on the install image and then flash the vendor and system files. And at last, install the kernel files. And now for people who don't know, Samsung doesn't play cool if you root or flash your phone, your warranty gets void. And if anything goes wrong, like I have soft bricked the phone. And if you go back to the service center, they'll ask you to replace the entire motherboard. So, Kaching. yes. And boom, One UI 7 based on Android 15 is here. Now I know the screen is very dim. We'll get back to that <laughs> in just a moment. Now you get this brand new One UI 7 on S9 Plus even before the S24 series. So you have the new scrolling app drawer, the new split notification and quick setting bars, the new charging Ooh. animation and the other things are there except the now bar. Now I know what you're thinking. Prati, can we skip to the good part? the hyped Galaxy AI. Does that work? Because if you see, Apple hasn't updated their one-year-old iPhone with AI, claiming that the hardware is not capable. While Samsung lets Galaxy AI run on older as well as cheaper A-series phone, the entire S25 series is set to have hardware that is built for Galaxy AI. So can that run on a seven-year-old phone? Or are companies just forcing you to buy new phone to get software features? Well, let's try first with Sketch2 image. So in this image, I'll draw an aeroplane. Boom, done, it works. Next, I'll try AI call translate from Hindi to English. Boom. Next thing, if I go to email and write a single line about me taking a leave because beaches are calling me, boom, the whole email content is generated. And just like humans, AI is also lying here because it hasn't mentioned by itself that I'll be going to the beach and all. So, smart AI. Beaches don't get you holidays. <laughs> Next, if I open an article, it can summarize that as well. AI features are working fine. And not just the AI features work well, but the most hyped and new Goodlog modules also work. So we install the home of Goodlog module and the animation is set to dynamic and look at that. The app animation looks so good. Like the animations are much closer to the current Samsung flagships. Now this project took us a lot of time, like from procuring the device to flashing it to using it, it took almost one month. But we do it because that's what fuels the tech enthusiast inside us. And we will build the biggest tech community in the next 10 years. And if you believe in the same vision and if you want to make something big, 
come work with us. We are looking for experienced gaming writers, anime writers for our website and experienced video editors for our YouTube channel. Now, we need relevant experience in the particular field. So if you are not the right person, but you know someone who is as passionate as us, forward the link, spread the word. Do it for the tech community. Now, back to the video. So in S9 Plus, the software and everything is fine. But by 2025 standards, is this seven-year-old phone even usable? So we tried the most common used apps in 2025, like Instagram, Prime Video, X, and YouTube. We opened them one after the other app, one by one. Also, we opened them in split screen. See, there is no lag at all. Now, if you switch to the other apps, open it in the background, they're still in the RAM. Now, we wanted to push this phone more. Can it handle real-life heavy tasks like gaming? That too with the games that are popular in 2025. Now with BGMIs, it opened fine. And the surprising thing here is a phone this old can run BGMI at 90 FPS, even though the display is at 60 Hz. I played for half an hour and surprisingly, the gaming was so good, like the frames were stable. It does get a bit warm, like 33 to 35 degrees, but it's fine. Now let's raise the bar and see if it can play heavy games like Wuthering Waves. Insufficient storage. Well, we'll come to that in just a bit. But to give you a perspective, this phone performs like a 20 to 25,000 mid-range smartphone. Now, so far, it seems like, wow, nice. An old phone can still run modern software, modern apps, and modern UI. So, yeah, companies should update their phone for seven years. They are just looting us year on year by bringing 10% improvement in CPU, 40% improvement in DSP. What does that even mean? Like, come on, Samsung, where is One UI 7 for the S9 Plus? Where? where? Well, there's a catch. In fact, a lot of catches. <laughs> oh, nice. See, I was expecting there would be some problems, but I faced issues that made me think, should modern software run on an old phone? Like, the S10 Plus was never built for today's animation-obsessed, power-hungry AI features. It drains the battery like crazy. For example, the phone was charged at 100%. We played COD for about half an hour and we lost around 36% battery. So if you game for two hours, the battery is dead. Now, as the phone ages, the modern software brings its own set of issues with it. So there are quite a few bugs in this ported One UI 7 ROM. Remember while installing the screen, brightness was low. So there is a brightness bug. There is a temporary fix for it. If you run this particular script, the brightness goes back to normal, but you need to keep doing this every time you want to increase or decrease the brightness. Next, the camera doesn't work, so you can't click pictures and neither you can scan and pay via UPI. Now in Galaxy AI, the generative fill crashes because some part of it works on device. So that's there. Also, the speaker doesn't work. And again, the good hardware features that came with S9 Plus that go in vain. Like the Galaxy S9 Plus came with an iris scanner. Yes, you heard that right. For those of you hearing it for the first time, the iris scanner captures high quality images of your irises using infrared light. The phone uses that to unlock with your eye rather than your face. So with the new One UI 7, since this technology doesn't exist, the iris scanner doesn't work. It also came with a dedicated button called the Bixby button, where you could also customize it to open an app. Even that doesn't work here. It also came with a sensor on the back to measure heart rate. Similarly, with a new One UI 7, that too doesn't work. Like back then, the tech wave was all about innovating, putting in extra sensors, extra buttons that would let your phone do more. Now, these features don't exist, so no one remembers them at all. So after all of this, let's answer this one big question. Do we really need seven to eight years of software update? Well, it depends. Here is a fundamental thing that we need to understand. The Galaxy AI mostly runs on the cloud. So all the cloud AI features were running fine here, but for on-device AI, hardware is too old. And from doing all of this experiment, we understood two important things. Like number one, the only company that is giving such long-term support for years is Apple. And if you see, they cut down on most of the features for their older phones. Heck, they didn't even give Apple intelligence for their one-year-old iPhone 15. Also, Apple is famous for slowing down iPhones with the new software updates. They have admitted it and paid a hefty fine for it as well. So way older iPhones, whenever they get an update, usually it doesn't have the latest features. Now, number two, company's vision changes in two to three years. For example, from 2020 to 2022, the entire wave was for camera slash video features because social media creators were on the rise. And now it's AI and this wave will go on for two to three years until they find the next one. So hardware feature changes in three to four years. The tech wave completely changes in four 
four years. Like for example, look at the S9 Plus and in the S25 Plus side by side. The heart rate sensor on the S9 Plus at the back is now completely gone in 2025. There was an iris scanner on the S9 Plus, but now it's completely removed because of the slimmer bezels. The Bixby button is dead. Heck, Samsung is now completely replacing Bixby or any assistant with Gemini. So it's hard for a company to actually design the latest OS to cater to a seven year old smartphone. So to sum up everything, what we have understood is that three to four years of software update is a sweet spot. Uske baad mile to theek, nahi to bhi theek. The fact is that longer software updates sound great on paper. So buy a phone which you can use right now. Don't run behind this eight or nine year software update cycle. Let us know in the comments, how long do you keep your phone before upgrading? And would you still use a seven year old smartphone if it had the latest software? And if you found this experiment interesting, tell us what kind of new experimental video you guys want us to cover and don't forget to subscribe. On that note, this is Parik signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew, pew.